Just when things looked like they couldn't get any worse for this RTX 5000 series launch, in comes along a new problem, and this has to do with missing ROPs or missing render output units. Now, essentially what these things do is they render the final pixels in the pipeline before that image gets pushed out to your monitor. So if you're missing eight of these, for instance, is the case that people are reporting, then you are essentially going to see less performance, especially if you are a gamer, because it's essentially eight ROPs that process eight pixels per clock. And so essentially when you're missing eight of these from the original design of your GPU, it ultimately means that you're gonna get lower performance if you are pushing pixels, which is exactly what gamers do. Now, essentially if you are buying an RTX 5000 series graphics card for gaming, how you can check for this is download a program called Tech Power Ups GPU-Z. I'll put the links in the description below, but once you get this program, it's just a matter of opening it up and then looking at the ROP count and relating that to how much ROPs your GPU should have. In this case, if you've got an RTX 5090, you should be seeing 176. However, people have reported even Tech Power Up themselves with one of their sample units reported seeing 168 units in this Tech Power Up GPU Z report. Now, if you've got an RTX 5080, these are apparently also being affected, even if it's a Founders Edition, where users are reported seeing 104 ROPs down from the 112 original specification. Now, if you've got an RTX 5070 Ti, this number should be 96. However, again, there are reports out there with 88 showing up in Tech Power Up GPU Z. Then for the RTX 5070, I believe this should be 80. So if you're seeing 72 here, you again are getting a defective unit from the get-go. So identifying the problem is fairly easy, but what's the solution to all this? Well, <laughs> this is where there's many layers to unpack here. First of all, if you come into a defective unit, my current recommendation for what to do here is to firstly either sell it to Gamers Nexus, who are paying 500 USD over your purchase price, which would mean that you are actually gonna get some sort of arbitrage here. So I was kind of checking out the few units that I have here, checking for a, and hoping for a reduced ROP count so I could make some juicy profit, but unfortunately all my ROPs were checking out. However, if you can't sell it back to Gamers Nexus, you can then fall back on warranty. And here's where at this point in time, if you do have a unit with less ROPs, I would recommend holding off from sending it back for RMA. Because if the manufacturer doesn't have a GPU to replace your GPU with, you could be out of a graphics card for months. And what I mean by this is I would actually wait a few months for stock to actually come back into normal sane levels and then request your RMA then, and then it should have a faster turnaround time and you should get your GPU back a lot quicker. But also when you buy a new RTX 5000 series card, you should at least, at the very least, have a one year warranty. I know for a fact in Australia, you have a two year warranty. So you could essentially use that graphics card for like 22 months and then file an RMA and get a replacement making that an option too. Now at this stage, people have to wonder, is Nvidia intentionally doing this or not? Let's talk about all this right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't wanna spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. And for a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Now the RTX 5000 series launch has been a real bad one for the history books. In fact, I'm pegging it as one of my worst launches that I've seen personally coming out of NVIDIA, which I'm used to seeing really decent launches coming out of NVIDIA, especially from a driver level and also stock wise being able to even see a card in stock and have the chance to purchase it as opposed to just seeing it come instantly out of stock anywhere in the world. That was basically the case for the stock levels, which I made a video about, I complained about certainly, as well as all the scalping that jumped on board with that, making the problem even worse. But then there's the driver issues, which I did talk about in my review. And I did see quite a few more issues than I'm used to seeing, especially from a user standpoint with these GPUs, as opposed to say the RTX 4000 series GPU launch or the RTX 3000 series GPU launch. So my biggest complaint is this doesn't feel like the polished NVIDIA experience that I'm used to getting even on day one where there's these little bugs that you feel like, okay, that'll just be ironed out in a few days. You're now getting massive bugs like hardware affecting level bugs that are causing performance drops that are permanent. You cannot fix this 
with a firmware update. Now back to this issue here with the missing ROPs. Essentially, it's been reported that this is a problem from the factory. In other words, Nvidia had these defective units and then they shipped them to board partners or they put them in the Founders Edition themselves and then those units proceed to make it to the shelves. Now, when we look at a statement that was issued to Tom's hardware in relation to this matter, Nvidia is aware that the problem exists and they are saying that it affects roughly 0.5% of users. In other words, one in 200 RTX 5000 series GPUs will be affected. Now they did mention here that the 5070 Ti and the 5090 were the only cards affected. However, we have since learned that the RTX 5080 is also affected and it just seems like this is magic arbitrary number where it's missing a set amount of ROPs or eight to be specific. Now, if you look at this statement a little bit closer, we can see something that stands out to me personally, and that is AI and compute performance is not affected. Now, the reason Nvidia released this statement is basically to tell people who are buying this product or the RTX 5000 series gaming graphics cards for AI that they don't have to worry. In other words, they're going to see the same performance whether these ROPs are missing or not. And this is an important thing because this is where it starts to break down for me personally and my biggest complaint about this whole issue. If Nvidia shipped these units knowing that they were defective, then they should have just relabeled them as an AI counterpart. In other words, if we had, for instance, the RTX 5070 Ti, they could then finally get that way of saying Ti out properly. In other words, they could call it the RTX 5070 TAI. TI, TI. Of course, RTX 3080 Ti, RTX 3090 Ti, Ti, Ti. And so that, guys, is it for the RTX 5070 Ti. And this honestly would have just solved this whole issue entirely. They could have had a different naming product, and all it would have had to have done is just put a sticker on a box to call it the Ti edition rather than the Ti or just the regular edition. And people would have known, okay, this is reduced gaming performance, and everyone would have been happy. There would have been absolutely no issue in regard to this problem. However, shipping these GPUs out to gamers and then having guys like us review the product and saying, hey, it gives out X performance when it actually doesn't, and the performance numbers is shown by Tech Power Up, they actually got one of these uh, defective units and they showed that the performance was roughly about four to five percent slower. And this is only for the 5090. Now the 5090, I believe has a healthy amount of ROPs. So losing eight here doesn't affect the performance as much as say an RTX 5070 Ti would, where this card is already pushing the limits of the amount of CUDA cores it has. And it's actually getting quite impressive performance for its even $750 supposed price point. And then there's another issue itself that we're just looking at here with the MSRPs going well above what Nvidia have stated that these cards will come from. Then there's the final problem that has hit Nvidia pretty hard lately, and that is the melted connectors fiasco, where this one's affecting the RTX 5090 the most, and before that it was the RTX 4090. In other words, they're pushing the boundaries of how much power can go through a wire, and that's coming out in the forms of problems, where there's some imbalances in the whole pipeline there, and that's just causing a melted connector at the end of the day. I've actually seen this before the RTX series was even launched, even the first RTX 2000 series with the power supply that I had around my studio. But ultimately, this just comes back to a classical age old thing in statistics, and that is when you push the boundaries of something, you're ultimately just going to fall in the realm of opening up more room for margin of error. And this is exactly what's happening with these power connectors, whether it's the power connectors fault or whether it's the actual design or whether it's the power supplies fault itself. The bottom line is there are more melted connectors occurring on higher powered units. I did make a separate video on this topic. If you want to check it out, I'll put the link up here. The now when all is said and done, when it comes back to the RTX 5000 series launch, I think we can all agree on one thing, and that was ultimately this launch was just too rushed. It felt like Nvidia wanted to get this product out as soon as possible, and there's a lot more problems that are creeping up with this launch than especially other previous RTX launches in the past. And it just doesn't seem, as I said before, like the Nvidia that I'm used to seeing, especially as a gamer or someone who edits videos, I am seeing even to this date in my mini ITX rig, these sort of weird stutters when my PC resumes from sleep, for example, and I wanna do a quick capture or shadow play, I'll then have the PC freeze for a couple of seconds. So this is a weird issue I'm seeing personally, one that I haven't mentioned in my reviews because I'm only really just coming into it after using it 
for a little bit and finding out this is a problem for me personally. Though a lot of these problems could have been avoided if Nvidia just pushed back the launch of the RTX 5000 series. I mean, it would have alleviated a lot of the stock issues on day one. It also would have alleviated more driver errors that have been occurred, as well as seeing things like defective units be repackaged into different options, like we mentioned before. Even though I was joking about the TIE option, they would then have a legitimate option to call something TAI or TIE. So when I see someone complaining about AMD pushing back the RX 9070 XT launch, I'm actually happy that AMD pushed back that launch if it means that they're going to get a better day one launch in terms of availability as well as polished drivers and weeding out any things like potential defects from the get-go. Anyway guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and if you have any questions or comments about the RTX 5000 series launch or anything we've covered thus far, then do let us know in the description below. But I honestly think the biggest winner out of the RTX 5000 series launch so far is the people with 2000, 3000 and 4000 series cards who can take advantage of that DLSS K update which makes it so that the quality is just incredible. In fact, I tested it out recently with an RTX 2080 in a previous PC build we just did, and I was so impressed with this new update on DLSS, uh, the Transformer Super Resolution update, that I'm probably going to do a dedicated video on it because you can just get extra performance using the DLSS over even native 4K, and in my opinion, sometimes getting a better image than the native 4K. It was actually really impressive to see what they did with the K update. So I look forward to giving you guys that video, but I just feel in the meantime, if someone's been affected by the missing performance, then they deserve to know about that and what to do about that. Hence, I'll put some links in the description below. And with all that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.